This is the art of wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. Come on in, sit down, relax. We're about to listen to The Art of Wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast. It's a life podcast. It's a personal journal. It's an entryway into the minds, the souls, the hearts, and the lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Colt Cabana. Hello. I am a podcaster. I am a seaman. Yes. I, I what else? What else am I? I am a Twitch streamer. I heard something about a Donald Duck. I don't know what that was. I am a member of the Dark Order. I am an all-you-can-eat buffeter. Uh, I okay. You gotta stop heckling me. <laughs> I'm gonna come off the stage to beat the fuck out of you. All right. I am a man who is not afraid to get off the stage and beat up my own fans. Thank you. Most importantly, though, I am a professional wrestler, and I am not coming to you live from my studio in Chicago, Illinois, but I am live on the triple whammy Chris Jericho cruise ship going to the Bahamas. Before we go any further, this is a fan-supported, listener-supported podcast supported by people just like you. We give it to you, well, we used to give it to you free of charge every single Thursday. Now it's sporadic. Um, the best ways to support, though, uh, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes for Wrestling Anonymous, my podcast that I do need help on. Uh, tweet out, tell a friend, let everybody know. Um, also, the best way, though, coltmerch.com, digitalcult.com, T-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs. And if you are on the cruise, coltmerch.library backslash merchandise. I do have... Uh, cruise only shirts. I brought a limited supply, and you're welcome to grab one. Um, beautiful. Love to hear it. Thank you for the support. Do I say anything else in my opening spiel? I think we hit it all, right? I think we hit it all. Okay. Uh, usually the format for this, we bring up guests, we have a good time. Sadly, this year, I was not able to bring up my, uh, I would say wingman, but there's already four wingmen on stage, so they will not be brought up, pardon me, on boats. Definitely not on stage. I am my own wingman. But Marty DeRosa couldn't make it this year to the ship. Yes, very sad. So I thought, well, who else can be uh, my second uh, help me out with the show whenever I'm in need. Throw in a witty comment every now and then. And so uh, I, I like, one man raised his hand. I, I, have, I have bad news. It's not going to be you. Um, <laughs> and now he's leaving out of sadness. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, but I got, what's your name, sir? Martin? Okay. Uh, Martin, I got, this, I got the second best option next to Martin. I couldn't sign the papers for Martin, so unfortunately, I have to bring up my second choice as a guest. You are over. Uh, sadly, Jericho said, I gotta fill out the forms. You can't get, uh, it's a whole to do. Blame, blame COVID, why not, right? Just blame COVID. So please welcome my second uh, alternate, Orange Cassidy. Sorry, Martin. <laughs> Where are you? Where are you, Martin? Martin. Sorry. Of course, that's a T-shirt available at Pro Wrestling Tees. I'm sorry, Martin. Get it today. Orange, you can um, sit over here next to me. No. All right. I took that a little bit to heart, but I do appreciate... Uh, anything you see during this show, feel free to call it. You have an open mic, an open invitation. Great. All right. Um, before I get into the guests, I usually like to kind of make some observations. Uh, but we are a little bit early here on the ship. This is the first day out to sea. 
So last night we did get some wrestling. It started raining during my match, which um, was that? Uh, Chris Jericho also said, I'm not allowed to fuck the ring. So believe me, it's been my dream. I'm so turned on by the ring, but I can. Uh, is that good? Do you like that one? Okay. No, he did not. Uh, all right. So speaking of unbelievable jokes, uh, Orange Cassidy is known to love my sense of humor. That is incorrect. Oh. So I uh, thought I would tell some cruise ship-based humor. <laughs> and we will see if Orange Cassidy is into it or out to it. Also, um, <clears throat> please feel free to boo him <laughs> when you hear these jokes. Wait, 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 hold on. Are you booing me or are you booing him? It's already started. Okay. Here we go. Wrestling-based cruise ship jokes for you on a live comedy show. Uh, Orange, where does Britt Baker hang out on the cruise ship? I don't know where. The dock. Orange. What? What would happen if Red Velvet and Blue Meanie wrestled on the Jericho Cruise? I don't know what. They'd get marooned. Some claps. Some claps. Some claps. This isn't necessarily a joke, but uh, just uh, something that happened yesterday. I, I tried to hit on Reba yesterday. Some know her as Rebel. Uh, and uh, I tried hitting on her on the ship by talking about the Titanic. It was a horrible icebreaker. Are you allowed to talk about the Titanic on a cruise ship? <laughs> Is that like... You know what? I want to know the answer to that question. Is that like saying Macbeth at the theater? <laughs> yeah. I think... I, you know what? I, th I don't know what you do. We have to, like, so throw salt over our shoulders now. What, what happens now? Yeah. Uh, sorry if the whole thing goes down. Sorry about that. You can blame me. You can blame me. So, all right. Just stop talking about it. Just talking about the Titanic? Yes. <laughs> so, the T word, I will. Do you think they had wrestling on that uh, cruise ship? The one with Leonardo DiCaprio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I wasn't think, there. I think Leo, that, that, the end was a Royal Rumble, I think. Okay. <laughs> I'll stop. I'll stop. Here we go. That Back. was the best joke you said. <laughs> uh, Dasha was trying to teach me Spanish on the boat yesterday. I got lost at sea. Thank you. And this is the last one. I think you're going to really like it. I, I wrote it myself. <laughs> I'm, ver I'm very proud of it. What's the best thing to do before going to the cruise ship's all-you-can-eat buffet? What's the best thing to do? I don't know. What's the best thing to do? Seaweed. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no. I, I get it. Because they get... No, no, I understand. Because they get it. high and then no, they no, want to... No, no, no. I wanna, get... We they, get it. They get, the everyone marijuana here, makes them high. Everyone here understands And then they want to exactly eat all the, the food. Joke was. The response was appropriate. High, they get high and then they want to eat the food. Thank you for explaining the, the munchies it. and then you What can, a hilarious joke. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, what would you rate me on a scale of uh, a Brad Williams Zero. to... Okay. <laughs> 
All right. Well, those are the jokes. I hope you appreciate it. At this time, we're going to bring up our guests. I'm very excited to welcome my first guest to the stage. She, uh, well, I'm going to get to the to the answer. If she's allowed to be on the sea, usually she is in space. Please welcome Chris Statlander. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh. <laughs> All right, relax. Uh, do we want? I mean, I could do five minutes on why we have boxes of water in this place, but I brought you cups if you wanted one. But you brought your own box. And, I put uh, the hydration powder in this one, you know, because I'm an athlete. Hydration powder is just. Powdered water? No, it's the liquid IV. It's like, it like triples the hydration, you know? Health. Health. <laughs> uh, Chris, what did you think of my, um, what do you think of my jokes? The crowd reacted a lot more than I did when you told me them before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the, the way, by the way, the very first joke. Yes, would you like me to, okay. <laughs> Where, where where does Britt Baker hang out on the cruise ship? The answer, answer is, is the dock. The dock, thank the you. The dock thank is you. not thank on you. the ship. It's where the ship goes when it gets to the port. And I told him that. Thank you. Don't support her. <laughs> yes. Are you allowed to be on the sea? Are you an alien? Are you an alien? Are you an alien? <laughs> Um, explain to me your alien powers. No. Great. It's a secret. Is that true? Not to me. Uh, you, got, you recently got some alien tattoo work? Or do you have a lot of alien tattoo work? Oh, you filled that in since I've last seen. Yeah, when I had a torn ACL, I had a lot of time off. Okay. So I got tattoos. Yeah. Waste your money. Get inked. Save your money. Put it in bonds and ETFs, please. No. <laughs> Thank you. We are on different sides of the paths here. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, what did you do during your time off on the, in your ACL? First of all, explain how you got hurt. I did a suicide dive. You know, you dive head first through the ropes at another human being, or at a human being, because I'm not one, obviously. Uh, and Shh, so it's I, a secret. <sighs> Do you want me to talk Sorry. or not? <laughs> also, so, Orange looked up so upset at me when I did that. Sorry, Orange. Yeah, you're going to upset my friend, okay? Anyway, important information. Groundbreaking, you know? Because we all knew, didn't know that I tore my ACL. Uh, dove head first. Uh, I landed weird somehow, and my knee just went... Pfft. And that was it. And, and I, that's I scientifically speaking? Yeah, I grabbed it, and I was like, oh, no, my knee. And then the person I dove on was like, do you want me to get the doctor? I was like, I think so. And then, yeah. And so Britt Baker came down to ringside. <laughs> no, she didn't. Get at the dock? It's, what's, it's where she hangs out I'm on just, the ship. Uh, it's, it's just amazing that all these people are here to, to, to see this and listen to this. <laughs> I'm... I'm I'm baffled every time. Every time. <laughs> every time. I appreciate your support. You're welcome. <laughs> so while you were off, tattoos, mm -hmm. squats. When I was able to, yeah. I, I worked out a lot because I didn't have anything else to do and I didn't want to go crazy. So I just worked out. That's it. Love it. Yeah. Love I bought it. a lizard. Well, you skipped over that one. Well, that wasn't while I was injured it was right before I got cleared, actually, so kind of. What's your lizard's name? Boots. What's the significance behind Boots? So when we got her, the person thought she was a boy, you know, because it's a lizard, you can't really tell. Uh, and we didn't know what, it was, you know, first time lizard owner. Uh, we didn't know what to name our lizard, so we let the girl that helped us pick her out name her. So she named the lizard Balder, but then we call our dog Snoot as a nickname, so we wanted something that rhymed with snoot, and then boots begins with a B, and it rhymes. Yeah. Boots. 
We got there. <laughs> you know, snoot and boots. Exactly. That rhymes. And do you love your lizard? Yeah, what kind of lizard? She's a bearded dragon. What does that mean? Uh, it means that she is adorable. Okay. And how long do lizards live? Uh, about over 10 years. Great. You're yeah. going to have a great time with Boots. I, I have a great time already with her. Okay. Uh, one thing I do know about you, Chris, mm -hmm. is uh, you had a fun little, I don't, know if, I don't know what you talk about or whatever, but you had a fun little career before wrestling. Is that correct? I guess so. Uh, would you like to share some of the, uh, um, I guess I don't want to ruin anything, but what, what, were your, what were your gigs before wrestling? I don't, are you talking about the stunt double? Yeah, oh, I don't know. That, yeah, I, was, I did stunts. Yeah, all oh, that. <laughs> yeah, that thing. Uh, Are you talking about working at Walmart or when I did crazy <laughs> stunts? On I'll tell you the one thing that uh, got like the most TV or that got TV time. Uh, I did a stunt job for MTV. It was they. It was one season. I don't know if anyone ever saw it. it was called Ladylike. Didn't think so. <laughs> it got one season. It was in the season finale. So if you made it that long, congratulations. Uh, um, what it was, was the gist of it? So it was a speed dating setup. So I had to legit, legitimately speed date people with people in my ear trying to tell me like when it was time to do the thing. And uh, the thing was that um, I think the guys stayed at the tables and the girls moved around. So we had one actress that got like obsessed with one of the random guys. Uh, and then she got into a fight with another actress for talking to her guy. And like all the other girls besides those two actresses, me, and then the moderator of it uh, were in on it. So all the guys and everyone else in there had no idea what was happening. Uh, yeah, so they got obsessed. Or that one girl got obsessed. They got into a fight over the guy. Then I went over and I was like, what's going on? Do you know this girl? And he's like, I've never met her before. And then the actress came over with like a breakaway table and hit me with the table. And then someone tried to call the cops. <laughs> but then we were like, it's just a prank, bro. It's just a prank. And then we hugged and yeah. Awesome. Uh, let's pull up the clip. <laughs> <laughs> where, do I, where do we look? Yeah, don't you run this? This is an, first of all, I, I forgot that I hired Orange as the producer of the show. I um, mean, let's roll it. And <laughs> this, is, this is an audio medium also, I apologize. So your, your thing was getting... I got hit with a fake table. What, wouldn't you go through a table? So it was kind of like a table, like it was like a stool type stool. I don't know, a bar stand thing. I don't know, words. Tabletop? That, yeah, it was like this, but it was a little bit bigger and shorter uh, and it was basically just made of like fake or like, like hey, ground up wood or whatever. Still real to me. Don't, don't ruin yeah. this for me. <laughs> Sorry. Because so. I, I still have Lady Like on my TiVo uh, <laughs> and I watch it all constantly. But yeah, it, so yeah, it was just um, like a, just like they make it out of sawdust so it just breaks very easily and then uh, she just r came up from behind me and she's like, don't talk to my man and I went, Probably easier than wrestling, taking a sawdust Stunts table. are way safer than way wrestling. Safer than I've wrestling. been set on fire and hit by cars in stunts, and wrestling is still way more dangerous than that. And then, like, Nick Gage just pops up from behind. He's like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Gage loves me, okay? Is that right? He does. He wore, uh, I had, like, merch bracelets that had my name on it, where it said, Chris Dad is my leader. And he, I, would, I gave him one because he loves me. And then he was like, man, Stad, I lost my bracelet and I got hurt in my match. I need another one. I was like, I got you, buddy. It, it, got, it got burned on fire during a match. Probably. Yeah. Melted off. Um, well, speaking about going into wrestling, uh, you trained with one of my favorites in one of the best schools in the country. MJF. No. <laughs> I was going to say create a pro wrestling in Long Island, I mean, New York. I mean, MJF was there my very first day of training. Okay. Uh, the training school is Pat Buck and, and uh, Brian Myers, correct? Yes. And so your very first day, is it his very first day too? No. Okay, so he's been there two days and he's the cockiest guy in the world, right? I think he was there like six months at least. Or he, he was already able to have matches right. at that point. And a piece of shit from day one? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want to say like what were his piece of shit traits, but um, what, what were his piece of shit traits? <laughs> Listen, I don't want to throw him under the bus too much, but he helped me out a lot. He did help you out? Yes. 
by te- you were too nice. And he's like, here's how to be a piece of shit. He's like, listen, we got to bring some attitude out of you. you you're kind of too nice and wrestling. You're, you're too good for this world. Right. Six months. You got to be a wrestling. scumbag like me. Oh, God. <laughs> um, and then what well, I guess what was uh, uh, what was the inspiration of kind of becoming who you are? Or is it? I'm getting a death stare. I'm confused. You are who you are. I mean, the, have you always had like an infatuation the, with, with the aliens in the third world? Yes. The I've, third I've world? Always, I don't know. What is that? <laughs> yeah, I, the third yeah. rock from the sun, baby. I've always been a big fan of space and science and stuff like that. Um, but I feel like with the whole alien thing, just if anyone has ever met me, they'll all know that I'm a very like just odd person. And I feel like sometimes being like, oh, alien, it's like, oh, I get why she's so weird. And it's just like a more visual way to kind of comprehend all that I am. It's more just like so people can understand me better. Yeah. And it's just like a instead of people trying to question everything about me, it's just like, this is just how I am. I and mean, I'm different. So sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Dallander, everybody. You want to see a cool trick? Okay. I mean, Ready? that was like the perfect right. get you Listen. out of here, but if you want to... Okay, sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay. I want to stay. <laughs> Go on. You know what I'd say to that, Orange? What a pop. I'm not staying anymore. All right. Thank you, Chris. Orange, what do you think? Pretty good, huh? What What was pretty good? Just my the job I did there? No, it was not good at okay. all. <laughs> Sorry about the clip I didn't roll. Uh, please, uh, the cool thing about this... The cool thing about this is, uh, hey, we got, we got all different kinds, kind of guests. Uh, very just, just real quick. You know, you said you, you've been doing this for 10 plus years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I uh, the transitions are pretty good. I was terrible. Okay, sorry. Interviewing terrible. You're, um, T- after ten years, you think you'd learn one thing or two to kind of like you know help somebody out during an interview. Not good. Um. Sorry. I, no, 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 no. I, I, I like thought, I thought like, up here. I knew she trained. I knew there was like some alien stuff in there somewhere. Uh, all right, all right. Well, maybe I'll get a second shot. I mean, shot. technically it is my fault because I am producing this show. Yes, that, thank you. <laughs> uh, let's give it another shot. I think I could do better. Uh, please welcome to the ring. He is a Hall of Famer, a legend, and uh, what an honor to have him on the stage. Please welcome Jake the Snake Robber. <laughs> Put you there. So, you're a tall man, Jake Roberts. Indeed. (laughs) Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. (laughs) Which I'd imagine you have to get that a lot because even, and I don't know what it is, and maybe you could help touch on it and explain, but (laughs) even as a child, like, I never said Jake Roberts was a tall guy. He was just, and, and you're, you know, you're of the era I watch as a child. And then I feel every time I meet someone my age who gets into wrestling, who shares a locker room with you, Jake, they're just like, fuck, I did not know he was that tall. <laughs> yeah, I do get that a lot. It's so weird. It's like, I've been around you guys for 30 fucking years. <laughs> you know? If you quit staring at my dick, you'll see how tall I am. <laughs> they can't help it. Hey, third, how long? He's been up here for how long? <laughs> uh, tw- 12 seconds. I win. Okay. Thank you. I set him up with that dick joke. Yeah. No filter <laughs> here, folks. <laughs> um, yeah, you're not afraid uh, to say whatever the fuck you want, are no, you? No, I figure after uh, being on this planet for 66 years and uh, having... Um, Having gone through some, having gone through some of the things that I've went through uh, in my past and in my life, I don't really give a flying what anybody thinks about what I say. You know? uh, 
I, I'd much, I'd much rather tell you the truth than lie to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. That was wild, though. You censored yourself from saying fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't even realize I'm saying it when I do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was at a TV station, and uh, <laughs> I don't think they're on the air anymore. And, uh, in West Virginia. And they said, you know, just be careful. You can't, you know, say the F-bomb. And evidently, I must have been really out of it because I said the F-bomb like seven times <laughs> in less than a minute. And, uh, and, and they went to, they cut it, you know, and uh, they're like, sick, oh my God, what are we going to do? And then we find out that it did go out. Now, was this, this, was this like territorial wrestling? Or what no, was this it? was just a couple of years ago. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> It was, it was really nice. They, they came to my comedy show that night and they said, man, our station is on fire. <laughs> is that good? <laughs> yeah, they want to hear it again. You know? <laughs> so, well, fuck, I don't know what the fuck's the big deal is. You know? <laughs> no, I, it's, it's a bad habit and I, I'm, I apologize. No, you have nothing to apologize. And that kind of... That, that kind of brings me like I'm at kind least of, I'm just apologizing for my language and not my talent. Yeah, you know. <laughs> nice, nice. You get that? <laughs> nice. Thank you. Wait, yeah, that's, that's the nice thing about wrestling. You know, you get into wrestling and you'll see some kid that's just starting, and you look at him and you watch him go out in the ring and try and work hard, and and after a period of time, you realize that that guy's just not going to fucking make it. You know. And, uh, and that's, that's when you come back around and you say, well, at least I was right about that. He did not make it. I've been doing this 23 years. <laughs> you, you're headed in the wrong direction. Oh, no. <laughs> you want to take it up. <laughs> At this point, it's all going down. <laughs> that's what she said. Oh. There it is. <laughs> um, I, I, I do want to hit on the idea of, of is, then I will take it back to territorial yeah. wrestling and kind of studio wrestling. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's clips on there, but I guess, I mean, you must have been on so many of those shows. And were there times where it was live and people were swearing? Or Oh, God, yeah. It, how did, what happened? Here's the best yeah. one, man. There was an old timer. Hold man. on. What a setup, Orange. What a setup. Uh, nailed was, it. <laughs> there was this old timer named Sputnik Monroe. Now, this guy makes me seem like a saint <laughs> every other word well he was you know he was down on his luck and you know he'd wrestled 30 something years and hell, he needed money man and out of the goodness of his heart i don't know how he said that because i'm talking about bill watts and we all know there's no goodness in that fucking heart <laughs> there's not a heart there's not a heart in there heartless bastard but um he gave Sputnik a job, and it, it, it lasted about two matches on the tape because it was like, I said, break you, cocksucker, one, two, you motherfucker, get off of me, you piece of shit, you know, and, and, and I'm in the ring, and I'm like, damn, you can't say all that shit, bro, come on, man, he's like, I fucking haven't said a fucking word, what's wrong, what's fucking wrong with you, and, uh, yeah, he lasted like two days, man. What are the what are the repercussions from the TV stations, or did they? Uh, they were pissed. Man. Yeah, but there's I guess there's nothing you could do, right? It goes out live. Well, that that didn't go out live. Sputniks didn't mind it because we were in Bohunk, Pennsylvania, or Virginia, Virginia, yeah. West Virginia, and I guess that was the only thing they had to put out there. You know, one of those deals, and they regretted it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my soul show, my son, my show sold out though. There you go. I don't doubt it. I had to ramp it up for my show. <laughs> uh, so we're on a cruise ship. A, I'm gonna guess you've never wrestled on a cruise ship. Well, I not well, that I remember. Okay. <laughs> there were many nights I don't remember. <laughs> there were many months I don't remember. Me too, bro. So, I. Uh, like I, I, I did a series of podcasts called uh, Pro Wrestling Fringe, which is all about kind of the weirdness of professional wrestling. And on it, I, sometimes I'll talk about like, uh, I, you know, wrestling at the Insane Clown Posse, or or <laughs> wrestle, yeah, or, or rest, Sometimes I wrestle, um, you know, I wrestled in front of like in an Orthodox Jew's backyard in front of four hundred. I was there. I was yeah, there. Was there yeah. I was there. Yeah. It's fucked up, man. It's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am. 
Um, yeah, meat, so, meatballs. <laughs> isn't that I- Italians? <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, obviously my question is, it's like your career has spanned <clears throat> for so long, yeah. and there has got to be some weird fucking places yeah. that yeah. you've wrestled at. Oh, yeah. I don't know if anything sparked. Here's, here's a good one. Uh, this was in Tennessee, and this was before this Garmin shit and all that stuff to show you where you want to go. We doing the GPS, old. Uh, we were doing the old thing called a map. <laughs> yeah, most of you don't know what that is. What's that? Exactly. <laughs> and uh, we got to find this place, and we got into the town, and we knew that there was no red light in the town. We were warned about that, which tells me not very big. And um, we found this one guy sitting out by his truck selling watermelons and we're like hey you know where so and so so and so is hey you just go up here and kind of cross the road there and go up in the holler and once you get up in the holler you want to hang a left then you're going to see the gun turret the gun turret yeah they'll be up in there with rifles but they're there to protect you from what (laughs) I don't want to go wrestle here you know so Sure enough, man, we went up in the holler, and uh, I still don't know what a holler is, but I, evidently I went through it because I got to where I was going because there was a gun turret, and there were two guys up there with rifles, and they had megaphones and shit and spotlights. I'm like, what the fuck, man? They got like a 12-foot barbed wire fence. Well, come to find out, it was a place where they fought chickens, you know, rooster fighting place. Some call it cockfighting. I love saying that word, <laughs> fighting. <laughs> but um, yeah, we went up there and we got dressed and everything, man. And we're watching the show, and I'm like, man, this is some weird. I mean, this was like, wow, deliverance all over again. And there are some strange-looking folks out there, man. And uh, I didn't see a man or a woman that wasn't dipping snuff. You know, they were all spitting and spitting and drinking and spitting and spitting and, oh, which one was which? I don't know. But, um, yeah, and, and my opponent got knifed uh, during our match. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just told him, sell it, you know. <laughs> no problem. Oh, God, Jake, help me. Move your hand. He moves his hand, blood shoots out. That's fucking cool, man. <laughs> How do you get knifed in a match? Uh, I pushed him up against the ropes, and the guy about 14 just pulled out and stuck him, you know? <laughs> yeah, it, it was no big deal. Nobody came, to, nobody came to get the guy to get him out of there. Nothing. I'm like, okay, um, do you love me? <laughs> yes, you do, you know? And uh, yeah, we get the hell out of there, man. But, uh, yeah, they tried to get him again in the parking lot, man, but he got out, he got out of there. And I'd imagine as a heel for you, you probably have those. Stories, oh my god, right? yeah, yeah. I think the worst one I got was uh well Bahamas was pretty bad cuz I got hit with a building block. Wait a second, I'm going uh, there tomorrow. On top, of the, <laughs> top of the head with a building block. <laughs> yeah, not good. Oh, they, wait, hold on. They had wrestling at the Bahamas? Yeah, yeah, in an outdoor skating rink. For who? Uh, for Eddie Graham. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't fun. Uh, <laughs> Skip Young was the baby face. And Skip pushed it to the limit, brother. He loves them people. You know, he was a star for one day, and he took advantage of him. And <laughs> really got us all killed. I bet- he, he ramped those people up, man, and they didn't know when to turn it off, you know. And I, I bet everyone's just like so excited we're going to the Bahamas. No, I wasn't. Right? I, I knew. I knew this was not going to be good. Oh, man. You're wrestling a black man in the Bahamas, Jake. He's going to kill you. He was loved. But man, was he loved. Yeah. They, they would rip the shingles off of a house, and they would throw them like a Frisbee. And those friggin' things hurt. And they're hard to they're hard to follow because they do like a thing you know like that and man they hit you and shit. No, Mexico, I got it. We were doing a thing in front of about sixty thousand Mexicans that 
took a very personal one I did. And uh, Sherry, Sensational Sherry and I were the, there and uh, we're having to fight our way back to the locker room. I mean, for every foot we had to fight. And she gets in front of me and all of a sudden we got a clear way. I'm like, damn, Sherry, let me hit one. You know, because she was up in front and dropping them right and dropping them left. She, you know, she was good, man. And damn, you hit him like a man. What the hell, man? But yeah, we had to stay there until like four or five in the morning. And they finally did an impromptu autograph signing by all the baby faces. They had to come from home, <laughs> back to the building, Plaza de Toros, and start something on that side of the building so we could sneak out and get away. But, uh, you know, it was fun, you know? Amazing. You've been through a lot. So cool. Check the Snake Roberts, everybody. Hey, guys. Thanks very much, man. Gasly. Spot on, man. This guy's spot on. Orange, what a get, huh? It was really good segues, too. <laughs> Thank you. You did a really good job. I did. I zoomed it out. Thanks, Jake. Jake's, you know, it's good stories. It's, you, didn't, you didn't do anything special. Well. <laughs> I, okay. You need a hand down, bud, or are you good? Yeah, well, love you, Jake. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, all right. How you... Hold on, we just had the cra a crazy run in. What is happening here? Um, sorry, Colt, but uh, Orange has to get drunk and judge spelling. Who are you? Wheeler Yuta. Oh. <laughs> I forgot it's audio. I messed up. My bad. All right, I gotta. Wait, Wait you're taking him away from me? Yeah, he's gotta go. Yeah. Gotta go. What? I'm yeah. stealing him too. We gotta go. Yeah, I'm sorry. Hey, uh, if you wanna go spell words after this. The amount of money I have given this man to be my second. Where'd he go? He left. All right, Martin, get your ass up here. He did leave. Fuck you, Martin. He... I was literally going to let him sit on stage with me. Uh, please welcome my next guest. And uh, I'm so excited that no one's here to bombard me. Uh, please welcome uh, Dr. Luther. Oh, no. Triple whammy, let me hear you. He knows how to get them going. Old school, baby. Amazing. Hi, Luther. I thought I'd bring a little uh, Canadian flavor to the show. Canadian, eh? Hey. Any, any Canadians out here? No. Couple? Couple. Uh, have you ever... Have you ever... Half, half our crew's Canadian now. It really is. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever been on a cruise ship before? Uh, two times in Japan. Really? See, that's why I wanted you on this fucking show. Yeah. But... I was really seasick both times, and the only time I left my cabin was to go do photo shoots for the magazines, and then I'd throw up everywhere and head back to my cabin. So this is the first time I've actually enjoyed myself. Wait, did you not? Yeah. Did you not? Re did you not wrestle on the cruise ship? No, we just took the cruise ship to Okinawa or wherever we were going. No, but that is not a cruise ship. It was a cruise. We were on like a ship like this. That is a ferry. Thank you very much. Uh, because we did that for Noah. We took a ferry up to, like, the, the upper islands. So, Hokkaido or whatever? I think so, yeah. 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 Or uh, Sapporo. Sapporo, okay, yeah, yeah. Wait, so are you going to still sit here and claim this? that was a cruise ship? The, it was a cruise ship. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> a Japanese cruise ship. What was so the entertainment on that cruise ship? I was in my cabin the whole time. Oh, I have no idea. You refused to do anything. <laughs> I literally went up, did the photo shoot, and went back to bed. And that was with what company? 
FMW. FMW. Yes. Sir. Which uh, just had an amazing dark side. Well, I don't know. Well, let me get your take on the dark side of the ring. Did you watch Haven't it? Haven't seen it. Haven't seen it. No. Uh, and what's your thought process through that? Don't want to or just haven't gotten around to it? It's a me thing. So this is my thing. I was there basically when it started for like four years or whatever. And I'm one of the only guys that was there, the still life Sabu, but then they didn't even ask me to do it. So I salty. will not watch it. Salty. Salty. I'm salty. I, I, I'm I, a salty <laughs> old man. <laughs> Under, fuck, under, understandable. But so kind of that was my thought process is, is you did. Well, kind of. Um, but I do like FMW. Hey, style. he's got an FMW tattoo. Woo. I also have a W tattoo. Uh, Legend. What were the companies that, like, the wild company? Because FMW is such a wild company in Japan. Was there was other similar companies? I W A Japan. Also. I wrestled for them. Yes. They were crazy. Yeah. And so, then when I went to W A, that was more just wrestling based. Yeah. So that was kind of Onita my thought. Pro. That was crazy. He had his own. He co did. Company called Onita Pro. What was the timeline on that? Um, late 90s to early 2000s. So was that after? Because I just learned. It was after he had left FMW. Yes. Yeah. And he did, well, you wouldn't know if they covered that. Didn't want to watch it. Sorry. Didn't want to watch it. <laughs> um, and that's what I was thinking was, uh, here we are wrestling on a boat. Pretty wild experience. But those, those companies were known for having just very weird out there types of shows. And, you know, later I wrestled for the company DDT, which is also kind of, you know, like, uh, I remember I wrestled for DDT. And uh, my friend El Generico like wrestled in the woods. Like, uh, yeah, he's a friend of mine. A friend of mine. <laughs> and I remember telling the boss of DDT, being like, "Can I please wrestle out in the woods, like uh, in, a, in a lake?" And they were like, "Wait, you really want to do that?" I was like, "Fuck yeah, I do." But that kind of all stems, I feel, from um, from these promotions that you actually worked for, right? Well, yeah, like. When you see some of the, the deathmatch stuff now, it's way crazier than we did. But what we did at the time was, like, really crazy. But so. also it was, like, in weird scenarios and weird places. Am Sometimes, I like, on an island with no fans. They, yes. have, they have shows on an island yes. with no fans. Did you wrestle on an island with no fans? I did not wrestle on an island with okay. no fans. But, um, what FMW weird ones did you partake in? Um, I just did your basic no rope barbed wire matches and chain matches, dog collar matches. You, know, you didn't go in the motorboat, in the boat on... In the pool? I was never in a pool pool one. Oh, were no. you sad? No. No. <laughs> uh, I'm what you would call not a really strong swimmer. Oh. I'm a really, really good sinker. <laughs> and you go back with Chris Jericho, what is it? So he started. I started in 87. He started in 89 or 90. Okay. So, so you were the vet. I was the, the <laughs> wily vet. Yeah. We, got, we uh, met on a... We met on a bus. We were on this, this guy, like a school bus, and was taking us to the shows around Alberta. And the bus broke down, and, I, and then I did like a quote from a movie that he knew, and only me and him knew it, I guess. And then we just got along from then. And in what wrestling world do you all go to the show in a school bus? <laughs> Alberta. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, explain that. Who, so who was the promoter? Why was it on a bus? How did that work? The promoter, I can't, I can't remember. I think, his name, I think it was Ed Langley or... Um, I can't even remember the promoter's name. But the bus was pretty rickety. And we had like an eight-hour drive or something up to northern Alberta. And, of course, breaks down. But they fixed it. So he, he's not using local wrestlers? It's like, I sold a show up here? There is no like local that? wrestlers. Like we're, most of the guys are all usually from like Edmonton or Calgary at the time. So that's who would go up there. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and then... Also, I uh, again, I talked about with Jake, I had this podcast called Pro Wrestling Fringe where I did a story about the pro wrestling bear. And it seemed like the bear got a lot of work in Canada around that time. I don't know if you were on any shows with bears. No, but I know that when I started, I started Stampede Wrestling with Stu Hart. And I know that at Stu's old mansion, they used to have a bear that they kept downstairs. I think under the stairs, I'm not sure, but... I never saw it, you but I heard all about it. Okay, and also you started with Stampede Wrestling with Stu I Hart. Did. I um, did. I, I got stretched by Stu Hart. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> uh, but tell. he always set you up for it. He, he did the same thing all the time. I remember I got stretched in a, in a parking lot of a pizza place, of all places. But he'll walk up to you and squeeze your arm and guess your way. Hey, 230, 220? 240. But. And, and then he'd squeeze you. You're a big boy. You're a big boy. And he, 
can I show you something? And of course, it's too hard. So just say, sure. And he wraps you up so your hands are like all over the place like so. And then he's like, if this is too hard, just tap my thigh. And you're like five feet from his thigh. There's no way you can tap his thigh. <laughs> and it's so painful. You're almost crying. And if you do wince or act like it's hurting, he'll put it on stronger and stronger and stronger. So you got to like no sell it the whole time. But it hurts like hell. So I just no sell and then he'd give up. And they go, he'd always go for the big guys because really, really big guys aren't that flexible. Sure. And he'd just make them cry. We glorify these stories about Stu Hart, the legend. But the reality was he was stretching people in the parking lot of pizza shops. True. <laughs> or in the back alley of the pavilion or anything. I remember, too, he called me one time. And so he phones me up to book me on some, show, on the, some shows coming up. Now, hold on. We're, was like a little bit of you like, I can't believe Stu Hart's calling me? Well, okay. So at the time, I think I was 18 years old, maybe 19. So he called me up. And he's like, hey, uh, I can't do a good Stu you Hart impersonation. You have to do it, though. You I have can't. To. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, so he calls me and he goes, we have eight shows with the WWF at the time. It was still WWF. Uh, you're going to work Barbarian across a Canadian tour. And I was like, that's cool. But I had just signed a contract with like, I got Tony Candelo, I don't know if you've heard of him, in Winnipeg, which was going to be a lot less money and a lot less awesome. But I still signed a contract already, so I went and did that. But anyways, before all that happened, Stu calls me. And he starts talking, uh, I have some shows for you, and uh, you're really good young talent. And then all of a sudden, the hang up. And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm about to get booked at WWF. That's what everybody wants. And I just got hung up. Then he calls me back, and he starts over again. And he's like, oh, these fucking cats walking, hung up my phone. Because he's got like 30 cats. So I was like, oh, no. And I'm like, no problem. So he starts over from the beginning. He gets just a little past where he left, and it goes blank again. And then he calls me back again, starts right from the beginning again, all the way, a little bit, hung up again. Now I'm like, what's going on? Like, my life, of course, sucks at this point. So he calls me back. It happens for the fourth time. Now I'm like, just sitting on the phone. I, we don't, it's not like cell phones where you can see his number, so I don't have Stu Hart's number. i waiting for him. It's the old style phones, right? So I'm waiting, waiting, all of a sudden the phone's again, and I pick it up, and it's him, and then he's like, who am I talking to? He doesn't even remember any of the conversation. But then we finally got through to the end, and then I couldn't do it, so. Oh. And in hindsight, I ended up getting ripped off by this other promoter, and I should have done the other one, but I was trying to be a stand-up guy. And you did, Tony Condella would do those hell tours, correct? I've done a many death tours, yeah. Death tour. Yeah, where we would have, it would take sometimes 26, 27 hours to drive up north to these reservations because he would sell the shows. You guys ever watch Ice Road Truckers? You guys ever see that show? Okay, we would do that in these little vans. He would have vans and then uh, the ring truck. And we'd drive over frozen lakes to get to these shows. And the roads, the highways there aren't highways. It's just like a greater truck would go by so, and, and make a road. So you can only do like five miles an hour maybe because you can't go fast. So it takes forever to get anywhere. So we go over these frozen lakes, and one time, and I got a picture of it somewhere. It might be on my Instagram. I can't remember. But there's a, a, a rig halfway in. Like, it sunk in, and we drove by this thing. So the whole time, it's, like, nerve-wracking. You think you're going to die. It's freezing cold. It's, like, minus 34 Celsius. I don't know what that is here. Super cold. And um, so you, can't, you don't even want to leave the van because it's freezing. When you get to these towns, everything costs a fortune. So... If you want to buy like a bottle of pop, it's like $9, $10. So, and then it, if you, you can drive, the worst part is we drive 27 hours, get to, the, get to the place. You're just staying in the school, usually in those blue mats. So we play floor hockey, you know, Canadians, we play floor hockey. You guys probably play basketball or something. We play floor hockey, hang out. Sometimes we get to do the show, but if we get there on the reservation, so someone had died within 10 days, the whole place is shut down. And there's no cell phone, so we wouldn't know. So you'd drive all this way, get there, and then be told, hey, we're not, you can't wrestle. There's no wrestling. Oh. So you wouldn't get paid, and you sat it for that long drive. And so you just have to sleep there and then try to make it to the next town. And hopefully nothing happened there. Fuck. It was brutal. It would be so brutal. Basically, if, they, if we would have broke down, you, we'd all would have died. Did a car yeah. ever like crack the ice or anything? Or None of our cars. None of yours but did. It does happen if you wait too late in the season. Yes. It'll go through. That's wild. Yeah. And, and then did you ever get to do WWF? Uh, I had a couple cu cup of coffee there in the late 90s. Yeah? Yeah. Doing what? Wrestling. Thank you. <laughs> 
Nailed it. Nailed it. Uh, Luther, everybody. Luther. <laughs> you guys, let's hear it for Colts. <laughs> Baby face in 101. Look at you. Um, thank you very much, buddy. And uh, isn't he a heel? I'm a lovable bad guy. Lovable bad guy. Okay. Which is not really a thing. Uh, <laughs> last but not least, I thought I would bring up um, two guys who inducted me into a cult. <laughs> I mean, just kidding, they're my friends. Please welcome uh, Stu and Uno. Yeah. Uno is doing his vlog and then turned it around to point it at me, but was just looking at his own face. <laughs> I'm not very good at he, this. He's, he's very new at uh, vlogging. He's very starting. New. You can sit right here, friend. Okay, we call that the Jake the Snake Robert Ooh. seat. Uh, he literally, literally sat literally on the microphone. I have no peripheral vision with this leather mask. So, how does, also, how does that thing smell right now? That microphone. Uh, so genuine. Uh, so I'm at the phone that you, the microphone that you put your asshole on. Surprisingly okay. okay. Surprisingly. Uh, but uh, uh, somewhat of an odd conversation we just had before this. I was asking people around me. I was like, "Does it smell like vomit?" And everyone kept saying, "No." So I think my mask might smell like vomit, <laughs> which is very worrying. Yes. Yes. I have to wear this yeah. often yeah. for many yeah. more hours, actually. Yes, probably. Which, yeah. which I feel essentially is just your breath <laughs> because it's coming up through. So essentially, you have vomit breath. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it. Right. Not it just, it. I would say brush your teeth, but look at these pearly whites on this look mask. They're so beautiful. I got, uh, I got work done recently. <laughs> yeah, you did. You had a new mask. Yeah, no. uh, Stu, how are you? Pretty good, pretty good. I've never seen you wear a different shirt besides uh, this thing. Uh, That's true. This, I hate anything that covers uh, too much skin. Um, when you got a bob I, like that, baby. I mean, <laughs> I barely wear pants, so you're, you're kind of lucky I got some pants on right now. I'm the complete opposite. <laughs> yeah, you really are. <laughs> as that... many layers as possible, please. And we were wrestling in Jacksonville in like 100 degree weather, and old Bondage Jones over here. <laughs> Covered head to toe. Le leather mask, leather jacket, leather pants, and then a few layers underneath too. Oh. Uh, one of your better decisions? Oh yes, fantastic. I, I do enjoy smelling like vomit and sweating all the time. <laughs> uh, I mean, it is great that we work for a company where, uh, you know, like, essentially, like if I went to WWE, like I have to wear this uh, a suit and a tie and, and everything. And, and on like days of shows, this is how This you is show how I up. dress like for, for big shows, uh, at home, outside, on pay-per-views, anywhere where I go. This is, this is what I wear, always. I was just trying to tell the woman who's having a full-fledged conversation during our show that she should be quiet. But <laughs> I mean, she heckled me before, and now she's uh, heckling by just having a... Okay, I brought it down. I brought it yeah. down. <laughs> this was your own fault. Cool. Yeah. Fuck that guy, right? Whoever. <laughs> yeah, Martin. Yeah, oh man, you gotta. Fuck Martin. Hey, where is he? Is he back? Better memory than I do. Oh, what if he was back? <laughs> <laughs> kind of wish. <laughs> uh, first time on a cruise, gentlemen? Yep. Yeah, yeah. I always was scared to get on a cruise because I've got some heavy motion sickness. So for me, this was either going to be horrible or great. And so far, great. Hey. <laughs> very, very similar. I've also never been on a cruise. I only said yes because I thought that either be the time of my life or a disaster. And it's leaning towards the first, so it's OK. Hey. <laughs> I, I do enjoy how Stu is like, I hate motion sickness, yet some of the moves you put people through. <laughs> <laughs> no care for their motion sickness. To, to be fair, anytime uh, someone like says, "I'm gonna do a, you know an airplane spin," so I'll get you on my shoulder and turn and turn. And I'm like, "Oh no, I will puke on you immediately." It's it's truly it's truly his weakness. We oh, used yeah. to do it at training all the Dude, time. Uh, once in Montreal, Josh Alexander like 
takes me down and he starts spinning me for like a giant swing. He does maybe half of a circle and I just broke and look right at him while turning and I go, you fucking stop right now. <laughs> and he just let me down. He goes, I am so sorry, Stu. And I'm like, don't you ever. All right, let's go. And we kept going. I was this close to puke on him. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I've ever puked. Oh, I have puked in a match. Yeah, yeah, we were there. You were there. <laughs> <laughs> are, are, we t are you talking about the Alco brawl with the giant tiger? No. Oh, no. then you puked oh. twice. Yeah. <laughs> I have three separate ones that I'm thinking about in my mind right now. Yeah, you, you propulsed in that one. Okay, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. I once, I was wrestling in a hard, for Mid American Wrestling, we we're doing a whole hardcore show, and we were the only. Um, we were the only regular show and I was like wrestling in everybody's blood and I had such a like fuck all you guys I was like I'm gonna make so I puked on purpose <laughs> out, out of spite out of spite <laughs> dude like if I'm gonna wrestle my blood you're gonna wrestle my puke it's after the match um, homicide put, poured Drano down my throat I puked during that uh, just another day at the office and then I don't, I mean, I barely remember. This was Giant Tiger. Uh, so, Interspecies Wrestling in Montreal, uh, you wrestled Giant Tiger in an Alco brawl where you had to take a ton of shots beforehand. And you're not a drinker, you don't drink at all. Correct. And so, five minutes into the match, you get upset and you start propulse vomiting. And it just everywhere. went, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> On stage, it went so On stage, far. It was, it, was, it was vicious. You both remember that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that venue, but it's very small and there's like a balcony where yeah. wrestlers. You covered watch, the whole thing. And you're really like, whoa. Like, I have <laughs> zero recollection of this. <laughs> Is it talked about in Canada? Like, No, but we were there live. It was yeah. in front of like 80 people. So. <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, okay. Uh, um, and I, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to bring anything down, but I, I do want to celebrate, right? I want to celebrate uh, our leader, Brody Lee, the great Brody Lee. <laughs> Hell yeah. Brody, 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 And I know when he passed, we all, you know, everyone shared stories in the locker room. Everyone, we were sharing stories on tape. Um, and uh, I, I don't know if there was something that, like, as you get to think back about Brody, if something, like, really clicked with you or if there was, um, like, like, you know, like, as we do podcasts, sometimes we just kind of start telling the same stories over and over again. And sometimes you get your own recollection of, like, uh, like it's, al it's almost, like, maybe it's in a way it's probably therapy with Brody is that w as we talk about it, we start, the stories come out and we start to think about it and then we're understanding kind of. Uh, I think it's because we mostly only have good stories. It's honestly my favorite like thing good. about it. Yeah. It's like we get to recollect and re and kind of go through time and realize that everyone was touched by Brody. Everyone had fantastic experiences. Yeah, like, so our, my experience with him was the same for others. So you know that he was like a genuine person. And it's very like reassuring to know that like your friend was a great person and everyone thought so as well. I always, there's a little bit of me that's a little jealous of like, I get to do these uh, BTE clips with all of you. And it is so fun, and we're always having the time of our life. But I did miss, I missed the period. Oh, yeah. Was that just madness? Uh, that was insane. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Insane. He, so when he was in the bit, he, he was almost incapable of breaking character. He so was so intense. He was yeah. so serious. Terrifying. And, and sometimes I was like, is he mad at me? Because he's like <laughs> yelling so loud in my face. And then it would go cut, and he would just start crying out of tears. Like it would be, it would nuts, but. As soon as he wasn't in the bit and we were doing our things and he was on the side, all we heard was like, "It <laughs> 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 is that giant man just when he <laughs> when he wasn't involved, he was the absolute worst. We uh, couldn't could we not. couldn't get through a single bit because he'd laugh through it or he'd like storm through laughing and <laughs> yeah. it never worked. Like so, we had to include him in every single one because it's the only way we could get him to stay silent for two minutes straight. Because he'd stay in character, like angry Brody at all time, uh, and then. So one thing I love about, like, I guess I, I'll, I'll go to Beyond the Mat is when, I think, who was it? It's like Bret Hart is like, go play with the headbangers. And it's like little kids. I think it's Foley's kids. Am I incorrect? Really? Or, yeah. yeah, I think. And, and like, we see these kids uh, playing with, like, the, the wrestlers. And, like, it's kind of, like, cool, like, to now be, you know, years later. But, I, I mean, I think we all, like, the cool part is, is I think we're all, like, 
we're in this negative one world now. <laughs> he runs the shop. Oh yeah, yeah. He, we all live in his universe. Yes. Like he owns the place. <laughs> we, I essentially just have a new nephew that yeah. I have to like. Yeah. And I think we all like know and agree that like, yeah, he's gonna be a wrestler. Oh yeah, he's sure. gonna be great too. He's ten, and he already. Well, is he ten now? I, uh, he already knows way more than most people in Canada. I'll oh, say yeah, this right he, now. Uh, he knows how to form a, a wrestling promo. He knows where cameras are. He understands motion and ring. Uh, he's training already. And it's all, I, people no. don't get this look, but we've been there before where, like, Tony will, will talk, Tony Khan, our boss, <laughs> and, like, Negative One's going out to do, like, something. And Tony talks to him like he would talk to any other wrestler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and like, and you gotta be like, Tony, he's a 10 year old child. But he's like, yeah, I need you to go out, like face hard cam, but open up, but do a good promo. And like, yeah. and it's so, and he's like, yeah, okay, no problem. And then he nails it. And it it's crazy because we like, one of the first promos he's ever cut, and we were super nervous because we're like, what is this child gonna say? Yeah. Like, first promo. And Tony's just like, hey, you got six, grab the mic, yeah. uh, talk some trash, set up a match for the future. And we're like, Tony, what are you? <laughs> this is insane. Yeah. And then the first thing uh, negative one says, like, so I'm going to say that and I'm going to let it sink in because the crowd needs to register. <laughs> then I'm going to turn to the cam. And I was like, what? how do you know these things? <laughs> <laughs> like, how, how does that even make sense? And we go out there and he's, I think he was dissing uh, Luther. And he says something, crowd goes up and he kind of just looks at us like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was real proud that day. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking did it, guys. You know, like, oh, he was good. I mean, I stopped myself from saying something about register, but... Uh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's right, register. Hey, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, God, I, and then I don't want to bring it down on the end, but I, I, I think it's important for people to know is uh, we're living in this COVID time, right? Uh, and this, first of all, I couldn't be more happier with how this boat has turned out. Everyone is vaccinated on the boat. Everyone got a test beforehand. And another test, too. Another Two test. test before, yeah. Two tests. That was, <laughs> uh, which, it was a nightmare for all of you guys, but in the end, fuck, it's great now. Yeah. 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 All right. And so, call me crazy as someone who believes in COVID. Uh, I feel very safe, and I, and I, and I love that we're here, but... Uh, you two are Canadians living in Canada throughout the pandemic coming over to America. And I'm sure that was a, a little more hassle than me. Yes. It was a nightmare. Oh, it was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. I think the worst part, like past, like don't even think about all the tests we have to do in quarantine and everything. The hardest part about it was knowing the rules and the laws as they were changing. Because even uh, the uh, patrol agent, like they would not know. We would get at the border and be like, hey, here's my passport. And he's like, can you do this? And I'm like, you tell me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we would ask questions like, are we supposed to do this? <laughs> Fuck if I know. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> you, you're the law here. <laughs> like, <laughs> They're not knowledgeable about this stuff at all. Did and, not and know. Neither were, were we. Like, no. It would change every single week. We would explain them the rules. And very often... We were wrong, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, it was like going back and forth because we would tape every two weeks and, and we would, obviously, you get tested to travel. So if there's Canadians here that you know, you get tested to travel in, you get tested to travel back. But at the time when we started, uh, we had to be quarantined for 14 days, but we traveled every 11 days. So because we were, a, were workers, we'd have to quarantine during those 11, but are allowed to travel for work. So unfortunately, like, I'm sorry, Ms. Suno, uh, but... She was stuck in my home for like 14 months straight because I was never, I was always back within 14 days. And because she came in contact Crowding with me, would have to stay ended. home for two weeks. Yeah. yeah. And so I, di I didn't mind. I got to see my friends travel and work. And then I'd get stuck in my home and play video games for 11 days. So it's really not that bad. <laughs> but I'm sorry, Mrs. Uno, your life was hell for two years. And I hope, I hope you're appreciating uh, yeah, the, that's the really great what it stuff came we're down doing too. We were quarantined like for 14 months nonstop. That's all we were doing, just getting home. I watched so many movies and TV shows. I must have watched John Wick 1, 2, and 3 like nine times. It's insane. Are, are you like me and you kind of miss the days when you could watch a ton of TV? Oh, yeah, I do yeah. sometimes. I can't catch up with as anything. Soon, as soon as I've got like more than two things to do in my day, I'm like, oh, I'm, oh brush get, my teeth, yeah. eat, oh, God. I like, get anxiety <laughs> when people talk about Squid Game and new shows. I'm like, no, please, not good stuff. I don't have time for that. Well... 
I'm sure a second, a fourth wave will be coming soon, <laughs> yeah. and uh, you'll be all right. Uh, that I was a wait. cruise joke. A wave, get it? Okay, here we go. <laughs> Try to turn it back. <laughs> that was rough. <laughs> Um, well, You're doing was, comedy tomorrow too, right? Uh, Sunday, Sunday, yeah, Sunday, Sunday we Sunday. have a comedy More show. More great jokes than two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I mean, that was how I was going to end it, but I got myself booed. Um, <laughs> do you have anything? Thank you. <laughs> any any light notes you can um, end yourself on? <laughs> <laughs> Something better, huh? Oof, uh, You're putting this in our hands. Uh, well, as Orange Cassidy pointed out, uh, ten years I've been doing this. <laughs> ten years. <laughs> ten years. Uh, Stu ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Put it down. Should I place it back on this? No one's coming back. No one's coming back. No one will sit on it. I will say... I mean, should I say that he... Uh, oh, yeah, I mean, throw him under the bus, please. That prick Ricky Starks didn't come to my show? <laughs> He's got a good reason. He's signing old. No, if you see Ricky Starks, you, you let him know. He was to guest on the show, and he couldn't bother. I guess he doesn't love me, but you people love me. You have come to the show. I appreciate it. I'm going to head back to my studio real quick so I can do some quick plugs and... Upcoming events! All right, people still remember. Very nice. Um, uh, but basically... Um, and we're back. Thanks for hanging out and waiting for that. Uh, let's give uh, a huge round of applause for my guests, Orange Cassidy, Chris Statlander, Jake the Snake Roberts, Luther, Stu, and Uno... Keep it going for yourself, the studio audience. Thank you very much to the Chris Jericho Cruz, the staff back here who is doing a great job, the tech workers, everybody out here. Tip your staff people, tip your waiters and waitresses. Uh, this has been the Art of Wrestling. For Colt Cabana, I'm Colt Cabana. Thanks.